Hello, my friend, and welcome to the Ever Better Talk Show for Teen Family for Teen Parenting. Yes, Teen Family for Teen Parenting. Well, you know, working well with others to reach a common goal is a valuable skill. And parenting is a team effort that requires cooperation and collaboration among many different people, including family members, uh, teachers, close friends, neighbors, and other caregivers. Just putting a group together won't make you a team. It's not enough. Family members must develop strong team family skills. Good team players support and encourage one another as they work together. They all do their part. Yes, they all do their part instead of expecting one person to carry the whole load. Oh yes, team family for team parenting. Hello again, my friend. And I am Wanda J. Prowell, your family service educator, author, and facilitator. Yes, bringing you issues of the heart for the young and wise on the Ever Better Talk Show. The talk show is brought to you by Weekly, um, by uh, Resolve 2010 LLC, which is a family resource company that provides educational resources for parental involvement, student intervention, in-family mentoring, healthy adult relationships, and proactive, yes, proactive early childhood solutions for teens and adult parenting. Please visit my website, my friend, at www.resolved-2010.com. That's www.resolved-2010.com to read my biography and all the other services that are available. All of my teen family for teen parenting by weekly free videos are available on YouTube 24-7, 365 days of the year. They are available there for you, parents, for your proactive family discussions. Just type in my name, Wanda Prowell, that's W-A-N-D-A, Prowell, in the search bar, and all of my videos will come up. Please take this time now, while others are still coming on, take this time now to tag uh, all your friends, uh, especially those of teens and small children, tag them now so that they will be able to listen to this ever better weekly talk show today. I want you to know, my friends, that it is a fact. Yes, it is a fact. This is why you want to go on and tag your friends right now so they can be coming on. Because it is a fact that you will never, never hear professional, experienced, child-rearing facts like you will hear on the Ever Better Talk Show. I keep it real. And I tell you no lie. The things that I share with you, they're either researched or experienced and taught. No hearsay on the Ever Better Talk Show. We are continuing our series of parents' non-negotiables for their children. This is where parents, my friends, parents draw the line. We're talking about non-negotiables. This is where parents draw the line. And they say enough is enough. They are fed up. And they refuse their child to be subject 
to harmful and substandard treatments and conditions. Are you one of those non-negotiable parents for your child? Continue to listen because again today we will discuss the non-negotiables of parents for their children. But today's topic is parents' non-negotiables for preschoolers. Yes, preschool. If you have been listening to my bi-weekly series, you know, we, we, we started the, the series of the non-negotiables with the infants, then the toddlers, and each one of those have unique characteristics and responsibilities for health, safety, or, or, or education, all the above. But today, my friends, for the preschoolers, and we're going to be targeting on the ages three, four, and five. Three, four, and five-year-old preschoolers. And and by the way, now you, you already know that we, we we usually get so involved in, in our talk shows that we don't have the time to um to discuss all of the issues that I would like to share with you. But if you look on my website and on, on my Facebook, there is a link. There's a link to the um, non-negotiables of um, parents for the preschool. There's a link there, and that will give you um, resource information where you can go and get more details. But today, we're going to try to cover as much information as possible. Again, the non-negotiables of parents for preschoolers aged 3, 4, and 5 years old. Well, you know, um, our ongoing, I shared with you a few weeks ago, our ongoing scripture, we always include a scripture because I, I'm here to tell you that no matter how prepared we are as parents, and we already know with the COVID, the elections and things of that nature, there are, there are things we just don't have control of. And so when we uh, uh, apply the word of God uh, to our lives, uh, asking him to help and guide us, and that just gives us a better understanding that everything is going to be all right. So, our continued scriptures for all the non-negotiables will continue to be um, Galatians, a sixth chapter, seventh verse, and Matthew, seventh chapter, twelfth verse. They all are the King James Version. Let's just read it together, and you can listen. Galatians 6 and 7 says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And Matthew 7 and 12 says, again, King James Version, Therefore, all things whatsoever parents, whatsoever it would that men should do to you, whatever you want others to do to you, do it even so to them, for this is the law and the prophet. Well, think with me now, parents. Think with me for a moment and see if you can understand how these two scriptures that I've just read are going to relate to parents' non-negotiables. Are you thinking? How are those two scriptures are going to uh, relate to parents' non-negotiables? That's the whole purpose of the word of God. It's not for us to look religious. It is for us to seriously consider how does it apply to us in our everyday life. Keep that in mind as we move forward. Let's examine our new vocabulary word for today's show. Our new vocabulary word is, mm, are you guessing? Impressionable. Impressionable. The teenagers may know something about the word impression when you're trying to impress the guy, impress the girl. But impressionable. That's our new word. Well, it is defined as not to impress. But our key word is impressionable. 
impressionable. Well, it is defined as easily influenced. Easily influenced because of a lack of critical ability. Let's say that one more time. Impressionable is someone who is easily influenced because of a lack of critical ability. Did you know, my friend, that children are highly impressionable and susceptible to every form of advertising? Recent brain research indicates that birth to age three are the most important years in a child's development for learning. But you know, I personally, I deem ages three, four, and five-year-olds as being a child's most impressionable age of all. Still referring to the word impressionable. As a one and two year old toddler, they learn through their sensory motor skills. We talked about that in our last show. But the preschoolers are discoverers. They're like the curious George. Remember the story, the curious George? They are excited about learning to try new techniques and activities. Yet, many are so vulnerable. They will obey and unquestionably trust anyone and not be able to clearly communicate their experience with their parents. We'll start still talking about the three, the four, and five-year-old. We already know that the infants, you know, they're not able to communicate as we are at all. So by the time the child is one year old, they are beginning to form one and, and two letter of phrases. But the three, four, and five year old, they're just beginning to express their feelings. So they're not going to be able to, 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 to articulate to parents the step by step or the process of, of situations and issues that they are confronted with. They are very vulnerable. Their minds are sharp. Accelerated learning comes easy when they're given positive motivations. I just love these babies. They are task-oriented. I just love them. They're so willing to help. Oh, I can do this. And keep in mind, you all know already that, you know, I... Uh, now, I have not only taught uh, early childhood for many, many years, but I was also an entrepreneur for 14 years with a very professional uh, parent-based and community collaborated professional child care center or uh, collaborated with the universities. So uh, I understand how eager these little boys and girls are, those three, four, five years old. Anything you need done. Oh, they all volunteer. I want to. I want to. From he from helping setting the table or picking up something that has dropped on the floor or a ball. They're just such great helpers. And they love to help, to clean, to store, to cook, to set the table. You just name it. They are ready to help. Because of their vulnerability, they can easily, easily be lured into harmful situations by their parents, trusted friends, and even sometimes family members. During this stage, parents, parents are enjoying they're so excited about being parents because, you know, you no longer have to take care of the infant. You're not changing the divers. You're not doing the formula. You don't have to hold the bottle, you know. The three and four-year-old, oh, my goodness, they can walk by you proudly. You can dress them up in your favorite or attire. 
And you just love the idea of experiencing your new position as parents. So, um, while you're celebrating, um, you know, your preschooler, of course, you know, especially for the, the married parents or even the single parents, you know, or because they're older, or sometimes, um, you know, finding a babysitter could be very attractive. You know, the child can pretty much take care of themselves with the proper supervision. So right now, parents are excited about, you know, babysitters. Uh, recommendations for babysitters. Perhaps even a uh, sleepover opportunity, you think so? Oh, yeah, and of course, you know, when you have your little child, you know, everyone is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, they're so excited about having a little John, a little mirror over, you know, and you're thinking, well, I'm just going to enjoy myself. You know, I trust these people, my friends or family members, whatever the case may be. And so you are off to have a good time. Unaware. Unaware of silent, proactive, early childhood measures to prevent and guide the innocence of your child. Parenting, my friend, is a 24-7, 365 days of the year responsibility. Never, never make your child feel that you are eager to leave them with someone. Let me say that again. Never make your child feel eager that you are, um, never make your child feel that you are eager to leave them with someone. You know, I can understand you have to go and take care of some things, but you know, I want to come right back. And they're waiting on you. They can't wait to spend time with you. But you know, um, as we continue on today's session on the non-negotiables of parents uh, for their children, that preschool, three, four, and five years old, I am remembering uh, an incident uh, when um, in my early years, I won't call any names or location, but I remember one of my little sweet, she was a preschooler, my sweet little I call them all my little sweetie pies, my little sweetie pies. But uh, um, this was uh, after um, after um, the, um, you know the the day we had closed, and I was working in a youth ministry. Yes, and um, the same little girl was in the youth ministry, and um, she came to me as I was standing at the door and greeting others to come in, and she said, uh, "Miss Wanda." I said, yes, baby, what can I do? What's wrong? What's wrong? She said, in the same calm, sweet voice, and she was such a such a sweet little baby, sweet little princess. She said, what's wrong when uh, your teachers smile at you when your mama is there? And when your mama walk away, she don't smile no more. I mean, I cannot tell you, I've never heard a statement even close to that in all my adult life. And I immediately, you know, responded to her and I said, well, are you sure she didn't smile? Oh, I know she left. She said, no. She smiled when my mama is there. But when my mama walked away, she didn't smile no more. I said, well, have you shared that with your mama? And she said, no. I said, well, I'll talk to her after our session, okay? And I gave her a big hug, and she went over, and she had a seat. Well, that was one of the, just one situation where the parent probably thought everything was Okay. Child is well behaved, well dressed, but she just didn't feel included. And and, and being and she was a preschooler now, she was able to differentiate genuine love and personality from fake love and personality. 
we're still talking about the non-negotiables of parents with their children, preschoolers, three, four, and five years old. My friend, please don't be offended. Somebody out there probably will want to hit the roof now. And I've never seen a situation like we are dealing with today. It seems like, oh my goodness, I almost want to have another hallelujah moment. I've never seen it where anything that is um, derogatory, anything that is not true, if it's false, it can be said without any interruptions at all. But the many, any truth is spoken, whether it's in testimonial or to validate or certain issue has happened, there's always this shh, 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 shh. And I've seen people intentionally when they are, 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 are speaking in behalf of the issue that just occurred, they were intentionally twisted. They were intentionally uh, 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 devalidated to make it appear differently. So right now, as you all are listening to the Ever Better Talk Show, you know, we're keeping it real. You know, if you are offended, I can't apologize for it. Because like I said before, you know, I'm giving you facts. Either research, experience, things that I have personally addressed and been involved in. And go to my website. You'll get a chance to read my Bible. But again, don't be offended. Hear my heart in this. Today's parents are too careless with their children. Let me say that one more time. Today's parents are too careless in caring for their children. I'm not saying you're not a good parent. You may buy your child the most expensive, most nice quality gifts, apparels. But right now, I'm talking about supervision. I'm talking about how parents carelessly demeanor is the word I want to use the safety and the health of their child. And I can tell you something. Some of these situations, you don't get to say, well, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't mean to. And we know it happens. But some things have such high penalty, high consequences, and it will hurt you for the rest of your life if you ignore those signals that do your attention. Parents assume that adults and older children they know. Parents assume that the adults and older children they know, we're not talking about strangers, are generally fair and love their children. Parents, what are some of your non-negotiables for your preschool child? What are some of your, non, your non-negotiables? You know, we, we've just said the non-negotiable means that, you know, um, that's where parents draw the line. Enough is enough. You know, whatever those um, rules or, 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 or guidelines you have Selected for your family, you know, that's what you want to implement, regardless what other families may be doing. You know, uh, you have a heart for your child, so that is a non negotiable. What are some non negotiables for your preschoolers, three, four, and five years old? The greatest fear and lifelong damage to all young children is the possibility of being sexually 
and physically abused. Not that they'll go hungry. This is what they fear. Sadly, these actions are committed by family members, trusted friends, including churches, youth groups, student organizations, and in the community. Even in your own house. Even when you're visiting relatives and friends. My question is, wherever your child is, are they in the visibility of your sight? Can you see them? Are you in one room, closed doors, or in a room where you cannot see what's going on? And if you say, well, okay, I, I, I have uh, such and such person looking after them, uh, can you trust them? I, I, I don't want to impart fear into your heart as though you cannot trust anyone because that's not true. But you have to understand, how can I say it, the, like the character and the diligence of the people that you're trusting. Because, you know, oh, where's my, where's little Johnny? Oh, oh, uh, you know, you know, on the phone. You're not paying attention. You don't know what little Johnny's doing. And depending on the type of area, whether it's a metro area, metropolitan area, you know, if it's a, 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 a whatever type of area, crowded, you know, violence, whatever the case may be, you know, little John is going on. Oh my. Positive. Parental engagement and child supervision is the greatest, most rewarding gift parents can give to their children. Parents, there are three pledges. We, we understand the pledge of allegiance. There are many various types of pledges. But let me share with you three pledges of honor that every parent should make within themselves for the health and safety of their children. And when I re refer to parents, I'm referring to the mom and the dad. The first pledge. Play it, hand over my heart. I play it. Parent, you can say it along with me. Yes. I will never make anyone feel that I trust them 100% for the care and safety of my child. Uh oh. Don't hit the ceiling. I said 100%. It's okay to have a measure of trust, but it should be earned trust. It should not be just because, you know, your relationship, you know, because of age or because smiling faces, you know. But at the same time, you can go as far as say 99.9% of our earned trust. But 100%? Hey, this is the Ever Better Talk Show. Issues of the heart for the young and wise. You cannot give 100% trust to anybody but God. It's only the eye of the Lord that's in all places. And depending on circumstances, Situations, locations, other friends, mental state, emotional state. You don't know what anybody would do. And I said anybody. 99.9, .9, that is a person who's earned your trust, whatever your relationship is. But still 99.9. .9. If anyone feels that you automatically trust them 100%, then it's just a matter of time because they know that your guards are down. They know you're not going to check behind them. They know you're not going to question them. So it's fair game for them to do whatever they want to. 
Because you have concluded in your mind, you've convinced them that you trust them 100%. Second pledge. I will have a second eye for your safety and health. Well, backtrack observations. And this happens sometimes, say, if parents are taking their child to, you know, to daycare, preschool, even school, whoever's taking care of your child. If they know you're leaving at, what, 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock, you're going to be gone all day long. And you're not coming back till you're on the clock. You don't know what's going on. There should be some form of secondary observation or information. You're sending a message. People respect your expectation for safety and health of your child. Sometimes if, if you're not able to, and I'm not saying, you know, Every second of the day, that's not what I'm talking about. But them, you should have uh, 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 another person, trusted person, either on the pickup list, whatever the case may be. I've seen some everything. I've seen people, <laughs> I've seen people, or uh, parents go like, you know, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to put such and such thing in, in little Johnny bag, you know. So, so we, we're just bringing it down, you know. And we're not getting, that's a smart parent. Because why you, the minute you open the door, you have an opportunity, you smell, you can hear, you can hear voice tone, you, you, you know if, it's, if, if learning, teaching and learning is taking place, if, if chaos is happening, are the children being fed on time, how are they being fed, you know, are they sitting orderly, you know, is, is it a, a, a sanitized situation? Is sanitation being perfected as recommended? All these little things. You have the extra ear. Well, and we're going to talk about more with the older kids, but right now we're just going to focus on the on the on the preschoolers. Oh, um, cuddle time. When again, the preschoolers they have limited articulation and communication skills. So any little word they say, no matter how sensely it sounds or doesn't make sense, smaller children are not like the teenagers or the college students. They're not articulating words oh, <laughs> to be dramatic. <laughs> if they say anything, pay attention to it. And when you're cuddling them, they need you to embrace them. Make sure you're cuddling your child, especially if you're working outside of home. Give them that one-on-one -on -one personal quality time because when you are, are cuddling them and the more they become relaxed, you and your partner, husband, have had this job discussion because you, you, you got your ears open for any little keyword. Any little key word that comes that gets your attention, that needs to be considered. It needs to be thought. It needs to be uh, uh, discussed. And, and, and don't throw it away. But just, 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 just be diligent. And, and you want to continue to observe and see if it's going to connect with something else they say. Because they'll give you information in bits and pieces. But I'm, I can tell you, I can promise you, it all will fit together. And sometimes you may even have to go and follow up and ask a question, okay? And also, too, uh, while you, you are cuddling with them, uh, sometimes they may say things that may not be relevant to them. They may something, say something that's relevant to another child, something they, that they saw they're trying to tell you a little bit about. Again, you want to be the, 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 the caring parent, and if it's involved another child, you want to, to carefully consider or, or, or how you would approach that parent. Because we'll go back to those scriptures now, you want to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So what if that was your child? You don't want to just turn your head. Oh no, it takes a whole village, especially when you're dealing with uh, small children. 
Okay? And the third one. Parents, I will not ignore my sixth sense. Young parents don't know what that is. The sixth sense. We're not talking about the 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 seeing, the hearing, the feeling, the smelling, the tasting. We're not talking about those five. We're talking about the six cents. Way back many, many, many years ago, the older uh, parents called it the mother wit, like mother wisdom. <laughs> now they call it like the six cents. Like your intuition, you got a hunch. I, I, I do believe that one of the gifts that, that God uh, created all parents to have, that is an intuition. When something just don't, especially the mothers, fathers too, but when something just don't sound right, or, 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 or that could be a family member or someone, a house guest, that, that everyone, you know, um, talk about how great they are. Or it could be a teacher. It could be whoever. But if there's a little hunch, you go like, hmm. Hmm. And you don't want to, you know, just just casually just, you know, just 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 just, you know, speak negativity upon someone. But you wanna uh keep that in your heart. You wanna pay attention to it. Because your intuition is a powerful, powerful mechanism that God created you with for to uh, protect your child and it's called instincts we talked about instincts some time ago but instincts is a very very precious 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 gift okay so now these are the three the three honor pledges that I want parents to always remember okay that is I would never make anyone feel that um, I trust them 100% mm -hmm. I will have a second eye for the safety and health of my child. And I will not ignore my sixth sense. And I can promise you, all three of these honors, you're going to be able to utilize them through your child becoming 18 years of age. <laughs> so welcome to the wonderful world of parenthood. <laughs> Let's use the remainder of our show to consider the target areas of parent non-negotiable for preschoolers. And then again, I want you to go to the link on my on my site that will give you uh, more details. But right now, let's just target on the three. There are several, 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 several non-negotiables. But right now, let's just focus in on um, three uh, key ones. And that's going to be child safety, supervision, education, and child care. And I may have to speed it up just a little bit, so I don't want to go too fast. Okay, just kind of stay with me. But um, non-negotiables for um, child safety and supervision. Again, you want to, um, you got to keep this 100. There's no slack. Uh, feeding, uh, a non-negotiable could be uh, for parents, all parents. Uh, it's a very, very important thing for you to know CPR. CPR at first day, especially CPR, when the child gets so many children have died. And when children are eating, that's not a time to just, you're just having fun, especially the food they're eating. While you're eating, you're having a little small conversation, but you're watching that child to make sure that child is eating and swallowing. You know, you can you can look at their faces and their eyes to turn out they're alert. But if one just start, you know, just looking straight. They're not saying anything. You need to be paying attention to that. Because that means something could be the uh, in that child's throat. Lost in the child's throat. Can't. And so the fact that they are moving, their eyes are moving, they are engaged, that let you know that everything is okay. Okay? Potty training. Potty training, we're still talking about the non-negotiable for the three, four, five-year-old. Okay? Potty training is very, very important. Okay? Uh, when the child was an infant, or uh, uh, your health and safety decisions for who was diaper changing was crucially important. But right now, the child, three, four, five-years-old, is able to go to the bathroom. So now my question is, who are you sending 
with your child to go to the bathroom. Never, ever, 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 ever send a child, male or female, to the bathroom alone. Never. And, and sometimes the, the three, the, the three, four, and five year old may have a sibling that may be nine or ten, depending on the location. That nine or ten needs to be supervised because they need to be going to the bathroom with an adult, especially major public metropolitan areas, because they all could be seriously kidnapped and violated. So, parents, this is very, very crucial. And if you're in a, in a home of a relative, if you're not outside the door where you can see that child come in and out, uh, uh, understand that is a very, very serious issue. And this is not about cousins and relatives and who you kin to, you know, and I know them. That doesn't have anything to do about that. Again, we talked about the 99.9 and the 100%. Small children should be accommodated and they should be supervised to make sure that they are in a safety, healthy environment. Holding a child's hand. Some parents feel like because they're three, four, and five years old, they're old enough they can keep it with, depending on where you are. You know, holding a child's hand, you know, is 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 sure. You know, it their safety. Depending on where you are, the child could be standing right by your side and someone could just walk up and just snatch that child just like that. So if the child is with you, then you know what your understanding would be. But if your child is with someone else, whether it's a teenager, relative, whatever the case may be, I cannot tell you how many uh, uh, children who has uh, uh, gone through a certain uh, fatalities just by being with uh, a different supervisor, okay? So now, playtime. Playtime is, is very, very important. Um, if it's playtime, you need to know that it's playtime because we're still talking about the, 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 the preschoolers of being in the discovery age. Do not assume, oh my goodness, you cannot ever assume that, that, that a, another child of the same age or children of different ages have the same or, 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 or have been taught the same morals and guidelines and teachings as your child. So privacy is not a good idea in any cases. Whether the child is going to the bathroom, whether the child is playing, your child needs to be with you. And, and, and I remember even right here in our own city many, 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 many years ago, that there was a family who was having a, a, a family picnic at one of the lakes. Everybody was together and, you know, all adults, they were there, you know, and, and a three-year-old child drowned. And you ask yourself, how in the world could a three-year-old child drown when all the adult family members are there? Well, when people start laughing and talking and socializing and, you know, the girls want to be together, the mothers want to be together. Uh, 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 uh. I'm just going to tell you right now. Uh, as far as the teens are concerned, I, I, I did a video on uh, why should teens wait to become parents. You wait because once you become a parent, your schedule is no longer your own. You willfully, you lovingly, you do what it takes to protect your child. If that means you, you, you cannot sit with the, at the card table, you know. And have fun with the ladies and the girls, you know, and you know, shoot the breeze. The fact is, man, where is your child? Non-negotiables for moms and dads. Um, nap, nap time. Nap time. Oh, my goodness. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. This clock is not my friend. Nap time. Uh, uh, uh. Parents. Small children speak in their sleep. Things that they cannot verbalize when they are awake. It comes out when they try to sleep. The screaming. The crying. You need to pay attention to that. What has your child been around 
involved in that will cause these emotions to come out. Many, many years ago when I was working as a student uh, in one of the child development center, a little girl, you know, she, 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 oh my goodness, we had to hold her and just show her love and come to find out, well, you know, uh, the mom and dad was, had just gotten divorced. There was a lot of, uh, 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 you know, domestic violence, fighting, crying, shouting. Kids absorb all of this if they are being violated in a tight way. When a child is not resting, you need to pay attention to that. Okay, fighting. Parents cannot assume because relatives are together or, or, or it could be, you know, you know uh, your professional friends. <laughs> uh, uh, everything that, that I'm sharing with you, uh, uh, it is across the board. It includes your professional friends, your back home cousins. It includes the family and the church folks. Nobody is eliminated. And the bottom line is that your child could be around an aggressive behavior. Fighting. And some of them will go to the to the, the extent of telling them they better not tell anybody. Sleepovers. What are your non-negotiables for your child? Whether or not they are preschoolers or older children, but especially pre-children, preschool children, because again, I'm concerned about their ability to articulate. And when they are able to articulate, pay attention to what they say. Do not check it off as though they don't know what they're talking about. And don't you dare ask the person who they say who's in question, because what do you think they're going to say? So you've got to make a decision between protecting your child or protecting whatever type of false reputation or whoever this other person is. But sleepovers are very, very dangerous. Oh, they're so dangerous. If at all possible, I won't recommend that a child uh, sleep over with, with anyone, no matter how close they are, unless that is a situation where that cannot be in the void. It's an emergency. And as soon as the situation changes, you will return to pick up your child. From the child, from the time the child is, is, is given a bath to, 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 to put on their, their night clothing to the time the child is in the bed or who's in the bed, who they sleep in the bed. Oh, oh my goodness, your, your child may be okay with sleeping with you and your husband. And that's a safe place. But is your child going to be uh, uh, okay sleeping with another couple? Auntie, uncle, whatever the case may be, you know, they're not their parents. Or, or older kids, cousins. Oh, what are your non-negotiables? Our society is experiencing various types of human addictions and challenges. As parents... You must look beyond relationships, relationship titles, and accept the ultimate responsibility for caring for your child. Always remembering that this age group trust easily and have very little communication skills. Children may also feel threatened to reveal the secrecy. They tell kids that, you know, I'll, I'll do something to your dog, I'll do something to your mom. They'll tell little kids anything, they'll believe them. So your, 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 your personal and intimate engaged relationship with your child is priceless. Parents, please, please keep it 100 for the safety and health of your child. Let's talk about education right quickly before we, we end up. I may not get to uh, the child care center, but let's just go to education. And we, we, we're going to where education is very important because the three, four, and five years old, this is time because they are in the discovery stage. They are, they are quick learners. They retain information if you teach them or allow them to experience any or, or project or around the house. Or, and I'm telling you, or your house is just loaded with learning opportunities. And, and the, 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 the Dollar Tree, the Dollar General, or all of these, these value stores, educational supplies are there in numerous volumes because people 
a lot of people's mind is not there. They're looking for the most expensive or the yada yada and or, or it's there. Take advantage. When we say homeschool, even if you're not homeschooled, your home environment should be worn for your child, age appropriate now, age appropriate to uh, um, have at their access all educational materials that, that's going to prepare them for school. Okay, benchmarks, benchmarks are very important. You are able to go online, you go to any state and go to the Department of Education and you can click in. Uh, for early childhood, and it would, and if you're not that, you may uh, call the elementary school. But benchmark, benchmark, give you a series of expectations of what the schools expect for your child to learn to already know before they enter school. And the sad part about this is that many of the children know less than this much of the expected information. For them to begin kindergarten in school. Their numbers, their names, or, or the letters, the words, the writing, the addition, basic subtraction, all these things they're supposed to know before they get there. So education, the three, four, and five years old. And, and, and there are books. Oh my goodness, books, books. Parents, 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 parents. Oh my goodness, parents. Oh, uh, um, three, four, and five year old. You have, we have got to do a better job. Kids hate reading. Kids are not able to read. That's why a lot of them don't do well in that subject area as well as um, uh, do not uh, have a love for books because books were not introduced to them as a positive uh, uh, initiative as small children. But there are so many different types of books. There are musical books. There are picture books. There are uh, 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 concept books. Concept books, whether that is mannerism or if it's numbers or sharing, whatever concept you want to teach your child, there are little books for that. I don't have them here to show you today, but, but, those, but those infant books and those toddler's books, that those little thick, thick, hard, hard, like, uh, uh, books. In other words, a child can put it in his or her mouth and the pages are not going to tear. Again, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, all these bargain stores have these very expensive books for a dollar. Well, let's, let's go to your music. The same thing is true because these, I cannot emphasize enough the, the three, four, and five year old, this is their uh, discovery period, and they learn so quickly. All you've got to do is just make it exciting. If you if you give them the information, they're gonna take it. They're gonna run with it. But you've got to give them good information because whatever they retain during this time, they'll want to keep it. So it can be something positive that can be processed, they can utilize within their school day and through their continuing education, or. I want to say praise the Lord, hallelujah again. Some of the stuff, our kids, they are learners. And sometimes kids, they, oh my goodness. When they enter school, some kids feel, they're made to feel. They may be ignorant, slow learners, you know, don't know anything. But in reality, they know a whole lot. They are so smart. But they know and they remember what they have been introduced to. So if they've been introduced to adult television shows, adult uh, 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 music, when I say adult, some of that stuff I don't even listen to. But does it teaches? So parents, you've got to be selective in what you are or uh, uh, presenting to your child. Oh, 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 and, and television, television. Oh my goodness, we won't be able to finish all of this. But television, not only discretionary shows, but discretionary time for TV. And the same thing with daycares. Daycare, some daycares, they are not, the children are not shown television at all until maybe 
once a week, maybe that's on Friday. It could be like maybe an hour for a special or, or, or um, a special lesson or a special concept. Because the TV is not the babysitter. The TV does not get engaged. Parents, we've got to do a better job in this. What is a non-negotiable for your child? Is it that my child would not sit in front of the TV 24-7? Is it that my child, when viewing, will review educational concept that they can be able to use or, or, or as they go into school? What about the music? What's the music talking about? And the dancing. Oh, my goodness. Parents, you're going to have to be initiative. You can contact any of your any of your your your, your daycare teachers, your your kindergarten teachers in your public school. They are there to help you. They will love you. They will congratulate you, even family members, in giving you the tools you need to help prepare your child. But this is not a time of waste. The age is three, four, and five years old. This is the discovery time. And they are they are yearning. Oh my goodness. And, and, and oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I just love them. And you, you can get them to do anything you want, but let it be positive. Oh, their count and, and their count. They'll say their timetables, their ad, they'll subtract, they'll make their beds up. They they they, they love cleanup time. They'll have their room organized. Oh, whatever you need, they're here. They're to it. And all they want is a, a hug and a Pat on the back and maybe one little old tree. Oh my goodness. This is the time. The three, four, and five year old. And and what they experience during this time, they will never forget. They will never forget. They will carry it on and it will build on precepts and concepts. Make sure it's age appropriate. And whatever you do, whatever you do. Supervise your child. Do not allow anyone, do not allow anyone to have the responsibility of giving them 100% supervision of your child. If your child is in a meeting or, or a group, where the case may be, children, church, where the case may be, you don't want the individual or your child to feel like you are, how can I say it? procrastinating to pick them up. When they see you first, that means you are happy to see them. I'm a grandmother now. But through all of our struggles, I have never, as God my witness, I have never, ever, ever regretted not one minute, not one challenge for my children. And if you do that, the Lord will bless you. And, and, and like, you're going to have your day. But right now, you have got to be the person to lead, guide, and protect them. Because they can't do it for themselves. And, and truth be told, parents, and a lot of parents don't want to think about this. They feel that once they have a child, they're going, their hope and desire is the prayer that they will be able to uh, raise their child. They be thinking about, you know, weddings and graduations. And, and y'all know that's not real life. All kinds of interruptions happen in life. So when you have an opportunity to teach your child skills and to embrace them, the three, four, and five years old, give them your best shot. Give them your best shot because it may be during this time. This may be the foundational opportunity that they will get with you. They may not have another chance. And I hope that's not so. But my goodness, let them know that they are your prize winning gift from the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this word today. We pray that none will fall from empty hearts, but in willing and caring hearts. Lord, please provide and protect every household. Your word says in Psalms 127.3, Lo, children are an inheritance of the Lord, 
and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Lord, give parents faith and insight to God, protect and nourish the invisible gift and talents of their children and give them commitment and patience for the journey in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hey, sorry, folks. That's all the time we have for today. You may read more in-depth parenting strategies in my book, Family Reunion. Yes, here you go. Family Reunion. Yes, yes. Family Reunion. Um, I want you to know that this book has nothing to do with hamburgers and hot dogs. But it has everything to do with the integrity for adult family members mentoring the health, safety, and supervision of young children and youth. Now it is available as a holiday special. You can go to my website at www.resolved.com on my homepage. I want you to join our show next Friday. It's going to be on November the 20th. Okay, and for and there you will have the, um, our next show will be the parents non negotiables for the middle childhood. Yes, the middle childhood ages six through ten years old. Six through ten years old. Mm -hmm. Some of you are probably going like, well, that's a little young. Let's just write over the the preschoolers. But I want you to know something, parents. This is twenty twenty. And the need for this age group is very different from what it was back in the day. Oh, you don't want to miss it. Thank you for listening to the Ever Better Talk Show. I love you all. God bless. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. And be sure to share with your friends and go onto YouTube so we'll be able to view all the others free. Team Parenting. Team Family for Teen Parenting. God bless you. Love you. Have a blessed, wonderful day. Bye-bye.